Now, ex excuse me, Mr. Hooper, but you're making rather a mess of our floor. I hope you've brought a dustpan and brush with you. No, but I have brought a magic wand. And here it is, you see. One magic wand. Will that clear it up? No, it might make him disappear. Shall we make him disappear? Yes. I think we really will make him disappear. Did you, did you shall we make him disappear? Yes! No, don't mind. I'll give him the magic wand. And... Oh! Oh, thank you very much. It. Thank you very much. Well, mystery, illusion, and above all, magic. That's what we intend to bring you this evening. This is the story of a remarkable North Devon man who runs one of the strangest factories in the world. His name, Edwin Hooper. His job, to make and create tricks for 30,000 international magicians. It's his job to see that sausages are saucy, cards are crazy, that uh, things like this eventually straighten themselves out. It all began about 20 years ago in a one-room, one-man business. Now it's the biggest of its kind anywhere in the world. Stars like David Nix and Tommy Cooper find their way to his Biddyford firm, which is called, with great confidence, the Supreme Magic Company. In its storerooms, in bewildering confusion, no less than 10,000 different tricks. If anybody can be said to manufacture magic, it's this firm, although mass production was never like this. Edwin and his assistant, Ian Adair, dream up at least one new trick every day. They have 14 full-time staff and 20 outside workers to help make and pack them. And some tricks, it should be said, are rather larger than others. It looks like chaos, but in a business which is strictly mail order, Edwin and his staff deal with every weird request on the day it arrives. And that part of the business is rather special. Apparently, there are absolutely no tricks about it. Strange rooms abound, like this one, given over entirely to dyed goose feathers. Vital for the conjurer who wants to produce a flowery flourish as if from nowhere. The business is undoubtedly bizarre, but with a turnover running into hundreds of thousands of pounds a year, it can't all be mystery and magic. Letters from conjurers in such unlikely places as Zambia, Cuba, Bahrain and Brazil have to be dealt with. Edwin expects to get 12 new customers every day, all to be added to the thousands already neatly filed and cross-indexed in his office. His only rule, customers must be professionals. Some conjurers expect their tricks as if by magic. Others use the telephone. Hello, uh, Bidifu 3625, uh, Street Magic Company. Oh, hello, uh, that's Mr. Kelly from, from, from Holland. It's, uh, it's very nice to hear from you. Um, yes, uh, the sacrificial cremation? Oh, yes, certainly. Uh, this is the um, illusion where you uh, have a spectator from the audience come forward and they place their head on the altar. Uh, you place two tubes over the top, uh, burning torch gears in the top, uh, lots of flames and so on, lots of spectacle. Uh, one of the tubes lifted out and the head's gone and you've got the skull there instead, like the one we've got on my desk here at the moment. Um, this is a very good effect. We can supply by return. Um, the price is £75, because uh, overseas postage is extra at cost. But we can send this, OK? Uh, it reaches you fairly quickly by um, British Rail Market, doesn't it? Um, yes, British Rail. OK. By, by, by British, British Rail. Uh, so you'd like me to send you one of those? Uh, well, you, you're, you're, you're on our file, so um, we'll, we'll get one off to you right away. All right, well, thank you very much indeed. Nice to have heard you. Wish you all the very best. Uh, bye, then. Bye. Edwin is probably the largest single influence on the world's magic scene, and it's not just through his tricks. Also in the factory are self-contained printing works on which two magazines a month are produced. It's a business which is as subject to trends as any other, and the magazines play an important part in deciding whether it's doves, chicks, or rabbits which appear out of that top hat. The firm is also a major book publisher in the field, but you won't find any of their works at your local bookstall. Again, Edwin is determined that none of the tricks of the trade will fall into the hands of people who merely want to find out how it all works. The supreme imprint is on hundreds of the classic books about magic. They publish 30 books on dove magic alone, including three encyclopedias. Packing books and tricks safely is an important, if prosaic, part of the business. 75% of Supreme's trade is for export, and again, there are no tricks about making sure they get to their far-flung destinations in one piece. But even in the packing room, there's usually something magical not very far away. Right, 
right, so I've got uh, three Leipzig books, uh, three Mellini books, six Verum books of magic. Uh, to America, uh, Washington. The firm has a daily post bill of £150, and in each parcel there's not just a trick and instructions, all come complete with jolly patter, carefully dictated by the boss. That's uh, 600 grams. Uh, yeah, Mel, yes, that's to Washington. Uh, that uh, was one hanky panky, one comedy sausage, one canister of you can do, was one gravity glasses, and one dizzy dominoes. Right, that's South Africa, 850. Yes, another white piece of farm. Not here, Mel, no. That one contains snappy egg bag and wild card plus. 650 to France? Yes, to France. It's one of each. Uh, make sure that one's insured, would you, when you send it? That one's 850 New Zealand. New Zealand, yes. That's a um, letter packet, a uh, green farm that one. And there's money in magic too. The business started to the sound of derisive laughter from family and friends has made Edwin a wealthy man. He lives in a fine new house in his hometown, although with a working day which can often extend to 16 hours and beyond, he doesn't spend too much time there. His outside workers are an important part of the setup. John and Joyce Hocking do all his woodwork and Edwin insists on a high standard of craftsmanship. Nobody would want an illusion which collapses on the dove's head. Even with his freelance workers, Edwin insists on keeping the mystery of his magic. Often they won't know what they're making, and by farming out the components, he keeps his secrets intact. One lady who'd made him over a thousand bags for the disappearing egg trick went to the factory to ask what they were for. Edwin performed the trick, and she left marvelling, but still no wiser about how it was done. All the boxes, bags and feathers find their way back to the factory and eventually into the inner sanctum. Uh, tricks of, uh, of all kinds. You're probably looking at all the bottles of champagne around here and wondering what I do with those. Well, those, of course, are used for vanish. You have a nice bottle of champagne just like this and you have a tube which goes completely over. It's rather small, isn't it? But there's a cloth over there. Could I have that, have that cloth? We'll try, to, we'll try covering it with a, with a cloth in, in, instead. We'll try covering this with a cloth and we'll try making the bottle... The cloth is rather, the cloth is rather large. You can't win, can you? Look, never mind. <laughs> Look, watch, watch the bottle of champagne right before your eyes. One, two, three, go, and it's gone. The tube just half size. It's like that. How did this fascination with magic begin as far as you were concerned? I started as a small boy of ten and I helped the great Levant, um, the local Garn Theatre, helping him in the, in the performance of the classic egg bag. Uh, I went on stage and helped him and I've been bitten, was bitten by the magic bag and I've been with it ever since. And eventually I believe you became, what was it, a children's entertainer? Yes, yes indeed. Uh, and I earned my living as a children's entertainer for some years. I, I loved entertain, uh, entertaining kids. But, but pretty hard work, Edwin. Oh, yes, indeed, yes, but uh, rewarding, as indeed is the whole, of, uh, the whole of magic. You're doing something you like doing, there's always something new and novel. Every day brings in uh, uh, new ideas, and, and you build up from, and f from, a, from a simple notion, uh, you build up something and you end up with what you think is a magical masterpiece. When was it then that you decided to start actually making your own tricks, Edwin? Oh, some 21, 22 years ago. Um, I was at the time working in London as a, a professional kids entertainer. Um, I came back to Billy. I decided that uh, I, I liked inventing magic. I liked the evolution of magic. I came back to my hometown. Uh, I love the West Country. I came back and I started the Supreme Magic Company. In those days, I was still doing shows to, to keep things going, as it were. And, uh, but nowadays, of course, I don't have a lot of time for shows. What then, Edwin, would you say constitutes a good trick? What must the ingredients be? Uh, it, depends on the, it depends on the type of trick, of course. If it's a trick for the children's entertainer, then it's got to have colour, excitement, suspense, audience participation. Um, it, 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 it depends on the, on the item. A, a close-up trick, a trick which you can perform at the bar, this has got to, got to be something with properties that can be examined. Um, there are many facets of, of magic. As far as children are concerned, then, Edwin, do you think magic has, can I say, retained its magic? Oh, indeed. Yes. Um, uh, I think children uh, have this, this sense of wonder, fortunately. Um, they like to be taken into this wonderland, and the magician is able to, to take them for a short time 
uh, into the into a, into a real fairyland. Do you think that they're any wiser now than they were, say, 20 years ago before television? Are they a little bit sharper these days? Um, no, not really. Um, oh, children are sharp, yeah, and intelligent, yes. Uh, but they go along with you. They ex they accept it. Children are uh, inclined to accept magic for what it is, entertainment. Um, and when, a, a, during a children's show, um, the kids shout, um, it's behind the mat or it's up your sleeve. They're really, they're really trying to show you how clever they are. And no, this is really good, you know, and in fact, you, you play them along a little because you have effects of this, of this sort which build it, bring in a little um, sucker element, if you like, where you lead them to believe you, you slip something up your sleeve or under your arm or, or what have you. <laughs> you reckon to produce a new trick just about every day of your life, surely you must run out of ideas from time to time? No, um, not really. Uh, I've been in magic since I was ten which is uh, so many years ago, and <laughs> it seems a long time ago. Um, and um, magic is my life. Uh, everything you see, uh, you see as a magical effect. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, there, are, there are about probably 15 basic effects. Vanish, transform transformation, transposition, like I'm moving from one place to another, levitation, and so on, you know. And then you... Um, you bring combinations of these together to, to make your, your magical effect. So what sort of things then trigger off the idea for a trick? Sometimes, oh, uh, you may be looking in a shop window, or uh, I was looking at the wallpaper uh, here a little early on, which I noticed was very brightly coloured with flowers, and flowers on the wallpaper, and I thought, it'd be a jolly good trick if we had a piece of wallpaper and rolled it up, uh, reached in the, into the tube, pulled out flowers, opened up the, the wallpaper, and then the flowers had gone from the wallpaper. So, in fact, you see, you can get ideas from everywhere. Would you like to buy the BBC's wallpaper? <laughs> <I don't mind. laughs> now, Edwin, you, you started off one man in one room. Did you ever dream it would possibly get as big as it is now? Not really. I, I uh, hoped for its success, and I worked jolly hard in those days until 3 o'clock almost every morning. Uh, I used to go back home, my eyes closed, you know, I used to cross the bridge in pity for them, um, with my eyes closed. Um, but I, I would really have liked the business to go along on the plane, but business goes up or down. Um, and I have the sort of mentality I have to keep pushing, uh, pushing away and, and thinking of new ideas. Money goes back into stock and uh, we're, we're always trying to think of something new. This is the fun of magic. I'm in... I'm in uh, magic dealing because I love it. I love, I, I love magic dealing. I love magic. Why so successful though, Edwin? Because you sell to just about every country on earth, don't you? Um, I think because we continually produce new ideas. This is really the secret of our success. Also, uh, so important, we, I treat magic dealing like a business, like a, like a normal business. Someone writes to me, they get the reply the same day, they get the goods sent off the same day, uh, and, and we, 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 I try to run it like a normal uh, commercial business, uh, albeit uh, it's, an, it's a rather a strange sort of business and it has this advantage of uh, it's also a lot of fun. So many of your tricks, what, about 75%, I'd say, go abroad. Surely that must mean trouble with rather humanist customs men sometimes. Oh, yes, sometimes, yes. Um, when I've uh, travelled overseas, of course, you know, and I haven't uh, had an invoice with me, for example, and uh, then you have these peculiar things like uh, uh, 100 vanishing elephants, you know, and so on and so on. Um, on one occasion, um, uh, a, a customs officer asked me what I had in a, a can, uh, and I said, well, I shouldn't open it because, in fact, there's a snake inside. And uh, this is because it was dismissed, you know. Uh, but, in fact, uh, when he opened it, the great snake jumped, jumped out to his amusement in actual fight. And, and um, lots of things of this sort can happen. Sometimes it happens at the post office. On one occasion, the post office phoned me up and they said, Edwin, for, for goodness sake, come down here right away because we're up to there in spring snakes. A little <laughs> packet had come in, and uh, this got torn open, and one gross of spring snakes had all sprung all, all over the sorting office. <laughs> Edwin, can you explain in, in very simple terms what makes a great magician? Is it something you're born with? Uh, ev anyone can do magic. Um, anyone can tell a story. Uh, the thing that makes a great magician is personality. Everyone gives a trick the stamp of his own personality makes it distinctive, makes it himself. 
And what about your own future plans? Is it enough money to retire on fairly oh. soon? Or oh, I, I, I no, I, I don't think I could ever completely retire from from magic, even if I could afford to do so. Um, in fact, um, I, I, sorry, I love magic, and I hope that I'll always be part of Supreme Magic. And what about your own particular favourite trick amongst the many thousands you've invented now? Oh, after all these years, it's still the egg bag. But I have, uh, I've produced many versions of it. I have an egg, egg bag that changes into a, a chicken. I have an egg bag with a clear front. And I have a, uh, I actually have a bag that, that changes into a pink, produces glasses of whiskey and changes into a pink elephant at the end. All variations on a basic theme, you see. Well, Edwin, enough of this talk. Waiting over there, 22 children from Saltash Primary School. Oh. They want to see some more tricks. I know I oh, do. Great. Here he is, children, Mr. Magic. Oh, thank you. We're going to show them a trick. No, we're going to thank them. Thank them very much indeed. We're going to show them a trick. We're going to show them a trick, and when we finish, we're going to bow. And all the boys and girls, being very kind, they're all going to applaud. So I tell you what, let's have a rehearsal. Let's bow and let's see if they applaud, shall we? Come on, bow. That's it, that's it. And we, we haven't done anything yet, have we, David? Yeah. Anyway, we're going to show them this trick. And it's a lovely trick with two silk handkerchiefs, you see. Two silk handkerchiefs just like this. And I'm going to take the handkerchiefs and tie them together by the corners with a nice tight knot. So there it is. It's a nice tight knot. One handkerchief goes over the other, and David is going to hold the knot through the material. Not the finger, the knot. Have you got it? You won't let go, will you? Right, because... <laughs> <laughs> They're doing it all wrong. We'll start all over again. It's a trick with two silk handkerchiefs. We're going to take them like this and tie them together by the corners with a granny's knot. Now we'll tie a granny's knot, so he's bound to get it this time, isn't he? A nice, tight granny's knot, and one goes over the other like that, and David, you're going to hold the knot. Have you got it this time? Yeah. You're quite sure? Yeah. You won't let go, will you? Yeah. Right, because... Yeah. He's done it again! He's done it again! That's not a knot, it's a twist! I'll tell you what, we'll try again. I bet he doesn't get it this time either. But if he does get it, we'll give him a nice big round of applause, won't we? Anyway, we'll just take them like that and we're going to tie them together with a nice tight knot like that. Cover one with the other. David's going to hold the knot through the material. Hold it li light up, David. Have you got it? Yeah, he's got it. So he has! A nice big round of applause! Yeah. Marvellous! Look, over here I've got another coloured handkerchief. Isn't that nice? All the colours of the rainbow and just a few more. And the idea is to make this one disappear, travel through the air, over there with the two, over there with the two that David's holding. Hold them up, David. Whatever you do, don't let go of the knot. You're not nervous, are you? Look, right, I'm nervous. Look, right inside this small cone it goes like that. Are you ready, David? One, two, three. It went with a bang. There's nothing there. Oh, but if you do, don't let go of the knot. Because there, look, there, believe it or not, there's the missing handkerchief. Tied between the other two, so bye, David. Come on. That's it. That's it. Oh, marvellous. He did that very well indeed, did not he? Oh, he did that very nicely.